Thanks. Uh, hi, Craig. Um, <laughs> hi, Craig. Um, I, I would. Agree. Yep. I, I would wait until um, after the game session. I will give you all of your okay. XP towards your character, and then you'll be able to apply that. Right now is mostly meant for you to just kind of like stretch your legs a little bit and kind of experiment with what you have. Okay. I just wanted to make sure since you mentioned the discounted rate, and I didn't want to um, move forward and then that not be a thing anymore. Right. Yep. Everyone will still have their discounted rate when they are given their XP from uh, their previous character. Absolutely. Excellent. So, yeah. So as you guys know, the Midnight Express is um, traveling through what is currently the Tempest on the outside. Um, the uh, ride is smooth as can be. Uh, the wraiths that are in the car with you seem to have a variety of different types of um, interests and <coughs> factions that they belong to. Some of them kind of mind their own business, whilst others are more talkative and social. Other wraiths seem to uh, maybe have their attention on specific things. Everyone seems to have their own separate agenda. But more importantly, what would everybody like to do while they are on the Midnight Express at this time? Just going to wander around and see if there's anybody particularly chatty. I'm going to be making brief but confident eye contact with basically everybody until somebody stops me to say hi. OK. <laughs> you will notice um, a man in the northeast part of the car um, kind of like <clears throat> give you a look. And uh, he'll gesture towards the cushion next to him as if to say, would you like to sit? Hello there. Hello there. So pleasant to meet you. Uh, what's your name? I'm Josie, and yours? Uh, they call me Tracker. Tracker. Tracker, OK. Yes. It's uh, equally a name and a title and a job description. <clears throat> <laughs> You're an intelligent one, I see. Very good, very good. I uh, couldn't help but notice uh, some of the equipment that you seem to be handling. Uh, are you, by chance, heading towards California? Uh, Stygia. If California, or if Stygia is in California, then yes. Ah. Uh. Unfortunately for you, Stygia is far off into the oceans beyond California. But ah, you seem to be uh, interested in a job in Stygia, if I am guessing correctly. Ah, uh, I do have a job lined up in Stygia, yes. Ah, what is it that you do, this job in Stygia? Well, in general, I do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And this time uh, I'll be, uh, well, one tracker to another. I will be handling some beasts of a sort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I am curious uh, yeah. what. Why are you so interested in my job? Why not tell me more about yours? <laughs> well, I uh, am very similar to yourself. I do jobs here and there. But unfortunately, I'm not fully aligned with our friends all the way in the Empire itself. I uh, tend to set my own rules and goals for myself, if you catch my drift. I do. Hmm. Can I... Can I share something with you? He whispers to you. I'll lean in and conspir be like a conspir uh, conspiracy, whatever the word is, and just be like, yeah, I would love to hear uh, your story. Or your okay. 
I am part of a group of individuals who are looking to change things, make things a little bit better from the inside and then eventually the outside. And he kind of like grins and smiles at you. <laughs> now, we're a little rambunctious, me and my friends, but uh, we're always looking to hire people such as yourself to help a lending hand if needs be. Uh, well, I do have a job lined up right now, but I'm not opposed to perhaps looking you up in the future. <laughs> If you have information, contact information that you would be willing to share with me so that I could contact you in the future. He kind of leans forward a little bit. What if I were to hire you right now before you made your way to Stygia? Hmm. It is an interesting uh, word. Sorry, out of character brain decided to go. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That is an interesting proposal. There we go. Uh, but I can't promise to be able to do your job as well as the job that has been lined up for me. And hmm, it really depends on the job that you're offering because I don't want it to interfere with my other job. Hmm. Let's talk. And he kind of sits back on his seat in the cushion, very comfortably, like leaning back and uh, has a big smile on his face. You'll see him very lightly knock his hand a couple times on the uh, banister that is behind him. And uh, the moment that he does this, the person who is sitting in the seated cabin behind him will get up and uh, start to leave the coach to the next room. So, uh, by the way, Mr. Alex, oui. you will notice um, up in the northern corner that there is a man and a uh, young woman who seem to be speaking to each other. Jay, would you like to describe your character for Alex? Uh, well, I'm... Fairly nondescript physically, but I'm putting on a very interesting uh, air of um, uh, words are hard. Hold on. I'm pulling up my picture so I can, you know, use the right ones. Oh, I'm an idiot. I already have it pulled up. Um, well, basically, a toned down stereotype of the Roma circa 1994 or well 1984 since that's when my character died so flashy on the outside but very plain physical features okay and i i have a um stick a, a very old looking cattle prod Miles, am I forgetting anything? No, I think you got, I think you hit it pretty good. Yeah. Alex, could you describe your character for Jay? Unfortunately, um, you are also bound in Stygian chains right now, too. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I'm all tied up at the moment. Um, but <laughs> I'm assuming that beneath the chains, you're able to see enough of me to see that I'm just a... Uh, not especially hulking sort of guy, but a decently sized guy, a little bit of a belly on him, um, wearing a windbreaker, um, or no, not a windbreaker, a, uh, sorry, a hoodie. Uh, and I'm assuming I'd be wearing my death, death mask, right? Yes. Um, and then my face and head is covered in a full face balaclava with big dark sunglasses covering the eyes. Um, you know, just kind of uh, uh, a sort of military bearing, despite the fact that he's definitely gotten a little doughy um, and, again, is currently in chains and 
uh, you can probably tell just by body language, even though you can't see his eyes, that he is looking around in just complete shock and confusion. And what even is this? <clears throat> I just realized I forgot to even think about a death mask for my character, I think. <laughs> Jay, can you give me a perception plus alertness roll? Difficulty six. Perception plus alertness. Two seconds here. Yes, yes please. Why did I close that out yet again? Yeah. Sorry, I'm still looking for my... Perception is four. Alertness is <clears throat> two. So six. Sixty ten. Sixty ten. Oh well, I got nothing. Okay. Wow, we we're off to a good start, aren't we? <laughs> I didn't watch. Yay! <laughs> All right. So, uh, you don't notice anything. You don't notice anything. Badly. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, in the middle part of the car, Nicole and Rob, you will notice a uh, hooded figure um, enter in the car itself. Looking a little suspicious, but um, nothing out of the ordinary when it comes to the Shadowlands and it being full of wraiths. But um, they all kind of gaze at the two of you with a kind of peculiar look as if to almost size you up and see um, what types of wraiths you are. And then they will continue. Oop, they will continue forward. Um, if you wish to speak to them, you may do so. But otherwise, they're just going to walk want, past you. I want to size them up as well. Is there like a streetwise role I can do or something to kind of determine who's it look like this person runs with or, you know, what kind of vibe I get off of them? Yeah. Give me a, uh, it's going to be your wits and streetwise. Wits and streetwise. Okay. Five successes. All right. Uh, Rob, this is a renegade. Oh. I'll, I'll give him a knowing nod. Okay. They will uh, not return the gesture, but instead they'll just kind of like adjust their eyes towards um, everybody else in the cabin and just kind of look over at Nicole's character, Arwen, very cautiously. Um, Nicole, how would you like to react to this individual? Unfortunately, you don't know their um, ties or faction or heritage, but uh, they seem to be just focused on you right now, kind of like trying to see where your allegiance lies or what kind of person are you. Um, uh, she will just tilt her head a little to the left in like curiosity, but mm. just kind of keep going. Just okay. kind of like ignore her and just keep going. Sounds good. Okay, and the individual, <laughs> yeah, and the individual will make their way to the next car or the next cabin. So, uh, Rob and Nicole, it looks like uh, Arwen is looking to speak to Rob's character. Oliver, is that what's going on? Oh, not necessarily. She just kind of glances in. Okay. It's like a little like, look up and down kind of thing. Smile, and yeah. if anything Rob, can happens you describe that. <laughs> Rob, can you describe Oliver to Nicole? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I, I guess I kind of look like a man who works with his hands. Some kind of contracting or construction field. Got dirty sort of work boots on. Um, my clothes is kind of beat up. Not in like a unhygienic sort of way more like in a, i've worked in this and they're kind of you know l used and lived in um so uh other than that uh yeah kind of like in the picture blonde hair beard and kind of 
somewhat scraggly hair. Um, so yeah, that's what I look like. Nicole, could you describe your character for Rob so he knows what you look like? Sure. Um, she's on the shorter end, has short, dark hair, kind of an innocent face because I don't see her having her death mask on at this point. Um, okay. She looks pretty young, uh, probably in her late teens or early 20s is probably what you would think. Uh, she's got a sword at her side, um, probably like a backpack or something on her back. Um, and she's wearing an eye patch on one eye. Um, probably like a leather jacket and pants. Yeah, that's about it. She looks, she, she looks like she's geared up, but she also has a very innocent look to her. So it's kind of like... You're not sure which way she leans, but she's pretty innocent looking. So hopefully the, you know, you don't think she's evil. <laughs> That's all I can say. Okay. The vibe that she knows what she's doing, like she's, she's a wraith who, like, I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to read if she seems like, you know, like green or fresh, like a new wraith, or does she seem pretty comfortable with what's going on and experienced in the way of the world based off of vibes. Um, and you don't have to tell me that. I can, I'm saying I could roll if I want to figure that out. That's what I was going to say, because Miles in, like, technically she's, like, doesn't know anything. So she's, she's pretending she knows everything. So would I mm -hmm. have to roll to make it look like she knows what she's doing? Yeah, that'll be um, your appearance plus subterfuge. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, if the difficulty is a six, I've got two successes. All right. Yeah. So, uh, do you want me to go streetwise or something? Yeah. Uh, this will just be your perception and streetwise. Okay. Uh, five successes. <laughs> All right. Um, so you can tell that she is definitely putting on a, uh, a type of performance to kind of come off as being, um, you said, Nicole, like, uh, inexperienced or experienced? Experience. She's experienced. trying to look like experienced. She has no idea what she's doing. Right. <laughs> uh, so that seems to be pretty blatant. All in all, um, I also have a few questions um, to ask you, Nicole. Um, one yeah. is, what kind of people does your character look like she hangs around? What kind of people does your character hang around? Um, like, what do you mean? Like, free wraiths, renegades, heretics, that kind of thing? Certainly, yeah, that can work. Um, I'm I'm gonna. She looks free, race, maybe. I don't know. Like, would she with her mentor, or would she not? It really comes down to whether um, you would feel comfortable being around free rates. Yes, she would. Okay. So, Rob, you'll get that. Get the vibe that she's right. a free wraith. Possibly. Or you get okay. a sense that she would definitely feel most comfortable hanging around other free wraiths. Well, I, I, if she's looking in, I'm going to beckon to the seat across from her. Okay. Well, I'm going to hop into the seat. Okay. Uh, Nicole, my second question is, um, how would your character react if uh, someone from the hierarchy were to walk into this uh, train car and stand next to you? How would your character react to that? Uh, she, in, like, internally, she would be nervous as hell. Externally, okay. she would try to pretend that she's not. Okay. 
Very good. Honestly, she's so, just afraid of everybody. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> in any it does. It does. Yeah, this is this is helping with Rob's uh, streetwise as he's kind of like studying your uh, body language. And then uh, the last thing is, what are what is Arwen looking for? What what is something that she is seeking out or looking for? What, do you, what, what is that? What is that sense that Rob gets that you are kind of like looking for? Just someone who stands out, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Because I'm looking for Peter, and I was just told I'm gonna know when I see him. So I'm just looking for somebody mm -hmm. who stands out to me. Okay, so Rob, you kind of get that too—that that she's looking for somebody in particular. Does that help out, Rob? I'll, I'll assume that Rob said yes. <laughs> was I? Hello? Can you hear me? Yep. We. Can, yep. I can hear you now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said yes. That helped. Okay. Cool. Yeah, if the two of you want to speak to each other, you may do so. Yeah, I'll, I'll nod and say, hi, Oliver. Uh, she will instantly deflate <laughs> and just <laughs> go, hi, I'm Arwen. Uh, hi. How's your day going? Not bad. You know, just... Uh... Taking a train ride. Where are you headed? Just uh, to, to the west. You know? A, uh, I want to do some sightseeing. Kind of want to travel around. What, what kind of places are you looking to see? Everything. I just everything. want to experience everything. Really? Well, that, that's going to take quite some time. There's Everything is quite a lot to see. Well, we're dead, so I figure we've got all the time we need, right? You would think. Well, everything, huh? Where are you starting? Where are you thinking of starting? Out west, it seems. California? Yeah, I'll start west and then just head my way back east. You from back east? I'm from the Midwest. Oh. Whereabouts? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I haven't decided that yet. So, um, let's just say Illinois for right now, because I'm familiar with that. Oh, from Montana myself. Oh, that's cool. in, a mo in a moment's notice, a uh, short and slender of build looking man. I think I know what he wants. Seems to be well-groomed with black hair, graying at the temples. He has a pencil-thin, immaculately trimmed mustache, small, wicked eyes that seem to pierce anyone that he fixates his gaze upon. And he looks to the two of you. Says, this is the quiet car. Shut the fuck up. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tickets, please. Tickets, please. I'll give him my ticket. I hand okay. over my ticket. Okay. Uh, he will, yeah, he will punch the two of them and uh, look to the two of you with a curious eye. Is there uh, anything that I can bring the two of you? Uh, refreshments from the bar? I'll be fine. Thank you, though. No, thank Very good. You. Very good. Any accommodations that we can make to uh, make your ride more plentiful? I'm perfectly comfortable right now. Thank you, though. Nothing I can think of. Very well, very well. Adieu. And you will vanish. Going back to uh, Jay. Um, you will notice a man bamf his way in front of the two of you. The man sitting across from you does not seem um, phased by this at all, by the way, and is quite comfortable just like kind of tilting his uh, train ticket towards this man and gets it punched. Uh, this man will then look to you and say, uh, Madame, ticket please. I will hand him my ticket. And he will punch it and look to the two of you and say, refreshments for your trip. I'm 
good for now, but thank you. Tracker will say, nothing here. And the man will bow politely and vanish again. Jay, uh, Tracker will look to you um, during this moment, and uh, he will hold a single coin of obelisk in his hand and kind of like, you know, tinker with it between his fingers so that it kind of like shifts over to the left side and the right between his pinky and his thumb and just kind of fiddle with it and says, so let's talk business, shall we? Sure. I have been informed by a colleague of mine on this train that a storm is brewing. And when that storm is finally unleashed, there's going to be quite a bit of hubbub happening here on the train. Mm. And, and uh, I may want to take advantage of those moments and uh, really just break loose, you know what I mean? I do, as it turns out. Hmm. So if you're willing to assist with such things, I might be able to make it worth your while. Hmm. Well, so long as I end up at Stygia, then Sure. Why not? Fantastic. And he reaches forward with his hand. Um, coin of Oblis is still within his palm. Um, you know, as if to like almost offer to you as a down payment, but kind of, you know, pulls his hand out towards you and says, then I think we got ourselves an accordance. I believe we do. Okay. And smiles. Uh, do you shake his hand? Hmm. Is he holding his hand out? Yep, he's holding his hand out with the coin in his palm. I don't know why this feels like a bad idea, but it does. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Okay. You shake his hand. Uh, he hands you the coin. And uh, kind of leans back in his chair again. And says... Got ourselves about, uh, it looks out the window. 30 more minutes or so. If you need to make any preparations, I recommend you do so. Good to know. Okay. Alex, your character um, is completely confounded. I will allow you to re-roll a uh, Perception and alertness if you want to try again. Difficulty I, seven if you want to try again. I would love to. Um, okay. Perception and alertness, right? Yes. So bad news. <laughs> <clears throat> so um, at this point in time, you get a sense that you can get up while still wearing your binds, and you can walk around this cabin area. But the chains only allow you to walk so far. Um, the Reaper keeps an eye on you, but he's not as strict as, you know, someone holding you by your collar and saying, don't go anywhere, don't move anywhere. He allows you a little bit of mobility because he believes that, you know, you have a right to walk around. So if you wanted to get up from your seat and walk around, you may do so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll try to see if I can strike up a little bit of a conversation like, hey, who are you? Why am I in chains? What's going on? Um, but like, as I'm doing that, I'll also just kind of stand up and start stretching my legs a little bit. Uh, yeah. He looks to you and says, I already told you, boy, my name is Koi. I am one of the Reapers here in the underworld, and I am taking you to the West. What more yeah, is yeah, there yeah, to yeah. explain? 
Uh, well, basically all of that. Uh, not gonna lie. <clears throat> um, so, okay, not talkative. I understand. It's not a big deal. Um, I, I guess. How did you get into being a reaper? I found myself the sharpest object that I could, and I started cutting away every call that I could. And I got really good at it. And I got paid very well for it. So you can understand why I would keep doing such things. Yeah, no, no, it, it makes total sense. Uh, who doesn't like to mm. profit from a hobby? <laughs> yes, and quite the hobby it is. <clears throat> uh, so what, what can you tell me about the West. <laughs> well. Like, why, why are we going you... to the West? East well, is a perfectly lovely time to, uh, place to go this time of year. Of course, of course. Um, one second, Alex. I'm checking the character sheet really quick. Then as I'm standing up and just kind of uh, stretching my legs, I'm also taking a really close mental note of exactly how the chains are tied on me you mm -hmm. know okay if i were going to try and and like get out of the chains what would the weak points be how much range of movement do i currently have that sort of thing yeah you get a sense that these stygian steel chains um are really well crafted um they are made of an alloy that you are not familiar with and um it almost disturbs you to kind of study it and wonder like how are these things made in the first place? They look like indestructible. Um, but you know, interesting, uh, interesting binds we have here. And your Reaper will look to you and say, you know, the reason why we are heading to the West is because I couldn't find transportation to head to the East, which is where you should be. You know that mark that I found on your body when I first reeked you out of your call? Uh, n n no. It's the mark of disease, my friend. It is the way that you died when you came here into the underworld. It is the yep. mark that indicates how you died. Which means I take you to the collector who picks up people like you who died that way. Unfortunately, your people are to the east. I'm going to the west to take you to the, well, fastest route that I could find us. They don't pay as well as uh, your citadel would have, but it'll just have to do for now. No, a lot of that, that checks out. So how much do you get paid for me? <sighs> That's none of your damn business. I mean, the guy likes to know how much he's worth. Not nearly enough as the trouble that you're giving me right now. Now, if you'll excuse me, <clears throat> and he kind of um, tilts his chin down and crosses his arms as if he's like pretending to take a nap and rest himself. Hot. Uh Ten, ten, four, good buddy. Uh, you go ahead and have yourself a nap. I'll just walk around and try not to fall on my face with the aforementioned chains. Don't travel too far. I get a sense of everywhere that you travel to. If you start up any trouble, you lose privileges. If you lose privileges with me, boy, I might as well take you somewhere a little bit unorthodox ominous and, and terrifying you enjoy your nap i won't i i will be a good little uh man <sighs> and he kind of like rests his chin back down again crosses his arms so much trouble and i'll just kind of like cautiously like move out into the aisle just to kind of get a better look of you know hey okay. what what's going on here who's where um Sure. But. Um, yeah, the gentleman in the seat across from you will kind of gaze at you as he notices that you are still wearing your chains and have your binds around your neck, wrists, and ankles. 
Um, kind of get a sense that he is studying um, the two of you very, very <laughs> carefully and meticulously. Um, nothing to the point that you can get a read of like what his intentions are, but um, you do get a sense that he knows his place in the world and is not going to interfere with it right now. Uh, Jay, is there anything you'd like to do in this situation? The moment you see um, Alex's character walk out onto the the opening, wearing his chains. Hmm. You know, I'm currently already talking to this guy, and if I weren't, I would talk to him. But since I'm already talking to him, I'm just going to keep half an eye on the on Alex's character while I continue to talk to this guy. But. Okay. Uh, if anything interesting comes up, I would. I might be um, willing to abandon this conversation I'm having to check out what's going on on over there. Okay, sounds good. Going back to Nicole and Rob, uh, you will notice your cloaked fellow um, make their way back. It looks like they're heading back to the uh, cabin where they came from. Um, Rob, you will notice that um, she gives you a very, very small nod of her face. Um, do you want to give me a read of that using your intelligence? <clears throat> Straight intelligence? Uh, you might want to mix in a little bit of bureaucracy. Okay. Difficulty six? Mm-hmm. Uh, Bach. Wait, okay. hold on. Do I have willpower to spend? Yeah, you do. Yeah, I'll, I'll re-roll three of these. Okay, I will take a willpower off your character sheet, but go ahead and re-roll up the three dice. Uh, one success, which leads to a non-botch, but not a... No okay. <laughs> All right. Um... As this character nods at you, you kind of get a brief moment and sense that, oh man, that body language means something. I completely forgot what that means, but it's it's like renegade talk for something. Um, unfortunately, I just don't remember exactly what that meant. And uh, she will leave the cabin after giving you that small nod from her face. Okay. Um, Miles, what I have noticed her nodding uh, at Rob's character. You would have noticed Rob's character, Oliver, um, take a glimpse at her, and you'll see his eyes kind of adjust as if he's trying to study her face for something, but you will not notice her nod towards him. That gesture seems to be something that she had done stealthily so that only he would notice. And then, okay. you know, as she's walking, you kind of like look and see her cloak, but you see her just kind of like walk into the next cabin. But you do notice that Rob's character, Oliver, does have this moment where he's like studying her face like, she trying to say something to me? But then he just kind of shakes his head afterwards, like, eh. Well, I guess I don't know what she said, but I'm going to keep an eye out in case I need to... In case something happens, I need to leave very quickly or, or jump into something very quickly. Okay. Makes sense. Because I, I have no idea what the message is, but it must have meant something. Mm -hmm. All right. Nicole, is there anything that you want to communicate to uh, Rob's character, Oliver? Yeah. Yes. Um, I will just go, well, if you're going to be sitting here for a while, if you don't mind, you know, keeping the seat warm for me, I'll be back. And then she'll just hop right out. Go this way. Okay. <laughs> and do I see Alex's character? Uh, yes. You will see as um, this character has opened the door and made their way into the other cabin, um, you will see <clears throat> Alex's character um, standing there in chains with uh, binds and everything. 
And I'm immediately not going to go in that direction because I know that's <laughs> a bad thing. So can I see this person here? Yes. Do they look uh, friendly? This is, yeah. This individual seems to be kind of minding their own business. Um, they kind of look to you um, for a moment, but then um, just kind of tuck their... Uh, their cloak a little bit more tightly around themselves and pay attention to the window as if I'm um, trying to pretend like they, you know, don't notice you at all. Ah, fine. Let's keep going. Okay. This guy uh, looks the individual, friendly. Yeah, the individual <laughs> sitting here actually notices you. Uh, he appears to have a book in his hand and he's reading the book very, very um, studiously. But uh, as soon as he notices you, Nicole, he will shut the book um, and just hold it in his hand and just be like, well, hello there. I will come closer. Be like, hi. Hi. Uh, My name's reading? Oscar. Ah, oh. man, just wait. <laughs> oh. What, what, what's wrong? Uh, nothing's wrong. But oh. it's nice to meet you, Oscar. I'm Arwen. Oh, nice to meet you too, Arwen. You asked about my book? Yeah, I'm just curious. I don't see a lot of people reading on the train, so it just piqued my interest. Well, this is a fascinating book, Arwen. <coughs> it's called The Book of Omens. Would you like to learn more about it? It's a fascinating book. Uh, could you give me a second? I actually do want to learn about it, but there's just something else I need to do real quick. Of course, of course. Uh, Nicole, give me a perception and alertness roll the moment um, he kind of like leans forward with his book very, very um, happily. Sure. Perception and alertness. Okay. Is Oscar activated roll 20? Ooh, yay. And blow those tens. Difficulty six? Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six successes. Okay. You will easily notice underneath his um, hood that is um, attached to his giant coat that he has a um, marking on his forehead that seems to be burnt there. So he is branded on the forehead with a very strange looking sigil. Oh, I know what this is. I don't know if. Arwen knows, but I know what this is. Okay. He is continues to smile at you. Is it a heretic? Seems to be. Ah, crap. Okay, <clears throat> I'm just going to keep going. I mean, I'll wave, you know, nice, so I'm not, you know, insulting Oh, Arwen, him, uh, where are you going? Oh, remember, I'm... I'll be right back. I just need to do something very quickly, and I'll be coming oh. right back. <laughs> I'll, I'll join you. That's okay. I need to get up and stretch my legs anyway. Am I seeing this? No, 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 it's okay. Yes, you do, Rob. Huh, I'm trying to stifle laughter. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I promise it's okay. I'll be right back. I honestly am very interested. I just huh? do need to do something first. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll sit down. Uh, I'll see you very soon, okay? Okay. Thank you so much, Oscar. And it was I nice to meet you, that. Arwen. I, I will not forget your name. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's two. Not correct. Let's go to the next one. Unless it's someone else's turn, I can wait. Okay. Uh, Rob, is there anything you'd like to do as Oliver while you were sitting there? Can I see what's going on in the next car if the door's closed? Like other uh, windows? Are you talking about over here on the left? No. Here. Over on the right? Yeah. Um, unfor unfortunately, with the door shut, you do not see anything going on on the other side. Uh, I am going to act like I'm kind of get up, kind of stretch my legs, and then walk into the next compartment, and then kind of just look around. Okay. Uh, the moment you walk into this next compartment, um, you will notice um, a very familiar-looking individual sitting at the seat. She does not uh, look up at you or address you with any kind of body language, as if she doesn't even know you. Okay. Um, to the northeast, you will see uh, Jay's character and a 
very formal attire looking gentleman sitting across <laughs> from her. It looks like the two of them are engaged in a conversation. Um, yeah. Awkwardly standing in the middle of the train car is uh, Alex's character wearing uh, Stygian steel chains and bonds around his neck and ankles and wrists. Um, the chains seem to be leading up and linked to a reaper um, who is sitting at a seat. Rob, can you give me a perception and alertness roll? And hopefully you'll be the first one to actually get this. <laughs> uh, two successes. All right. Um, as you're kind of entering the room and studying the area, you'll notice um, sitting on, or placed more, more so, <clears throat> placed on the seat next to the Reaper appears to be a very large looking case. Um, it looks like it could hold an instrument inside of it, but then you just kind of like study it a little bit further and go, no, that looks like something that you would keep a rifle inside. So the Reaper seems to have a hidden weapon inside of this large case next to him. Huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to, and in the absence of, I'm not going to look directly at this person. Uh, I assume okay. I don't recognize this person. Uh, you do not recognize them, no. Uh, without being too indiscreet, can I kind of get a vibe off of them or see if I can I yeah. basically pick up on if there are any other renegades in the room without going, hey, any renegades in here? <laughs> uh, give, me, give me your wits and streetwise, please. Hey, are you a renegade? Okay. Uh, four successes. Okay. Um, as you're kind of studying the room a little bit, uh, next to your renegade friend who is already sitting um, in her seat down below, you'll notice that um, the man standing here definitely seems to have um, particular colors, maybe some patches and some uh, materials, parts of his clothing that definitely um, hearken to what renegades would usually wear. Um, when they're, you know, trying to fit in and uh, look the part as a regular Stygian um, citizen or hierarchy member. Um, and you just get a read off of him that he is really, really well in disguise. But um, definitely um, the way that he's positioned his body next to your uh, acquaintance earlier, that the two of them are working together and are in cahoots. Um, you'll notice through his body language that he is studying the Reaper down below, seated in the car, and at the same time is also kind of every now and then looking at the uh, chains that are bound around on the individual who is um, in captivity. Okay. You do not get you do not get a sense at all that. Um, Jay's character seems to be a renegade of any type or sort. She looks like she has some other purpose behind her. Okay. Um, yeah. What I want to do, I don't want to, I certainly don't want to eyeball this guy out as a renegade, so I'm not going to really make <clears throat> any direct contact with him at all. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is if I go here, if I sit here, yeah. can the, this Reaper see me at all? No, he cannot. Um, can he see me at all? Uh, Alex's character can, yes. It, it, can I, if I sit here, I want to transmit a, like, a signal across here. Okay. So you make like a gesture with your hand or something to indicate, hey. Yeah, I'm just going to make a, tr uh, hopefully she picks it up. If not, that's fine. But uh, kind of a subtle get gesture, pass a subtle gesture that like, you know, gun. Oh, so you're making a gesture towards Alex's character that there's a gun? No, no, no. I'm making a gesture towards her to let her know oh, that I spotted that a, a potential gun. gun case. Yeah, okay. just to keep an eye out. Gotcha. All right. 
her eyes will look at you for a few moments, but then her attention kind of gets drawn away again. So whatever you've communicated to her. Yeah. Understandable. Okay. And then the only other thing I'm going to do because is completely mind my own business and not draw anyone out. So at this point on, I'm not making eye contact. I'm not, I'm, I'm just kind of minding my own business from here on out, maybe looking out the window or, but yeah, I'm not doing anything unless stuff starts to, you know, explode into action in this car. Gotcha. Alex, is there anything that you'd like to say or do in this scene? Uh, I mean, everybody seems to, you know, be fairly adept at minding their own business. Um, you know, when in Rome, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. So having stretched my legs and gotten kind of a lay of the, of the land, so to speak, I guess I'll just kind of head back into the compartment and sit down opposite Mr. McReaper face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. And yes, I know his name is Coy, but I'm never going to actually call him that. Mm -hmm. right. Sounds good. I knew a kid named Coy, and you know, this is an improvement over the person I knew. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jay, Tracker will make a motion with his fingers towards you to kind of indicate uh, 10 minutes towards you. Hmm. Uh, brain fart. Refresh me on what I had literally just said with this guy. 10 minutes. You said so that he said that he would like to hire you for a job before you make it to Stygia, and you um, impressed upon him oh, that, that's you'd, right. that you'd be willing to work for him. Gotcha. So 10 minutes, he, and did he tell me the details of what I'm supposed to do? He did not, but he did talk in code. So if you want to try to interpret that code, um, I'm going to need an intelligence roll from you. Oh, hooray! I hope they caught up. Jay, do you have any politics? Jay, do you have any politics? politics? Uh, no, I don't. Damn. Okay. I do have investigation and enigmas. Uh... I'll allow enigmas. Enigmas? Oh, nice. Yeah. Enigmas will work. Renegade All sign right. language. All right. Well, 5d10s it is. Roll 5d10. Oh, holy crap, I can explode that. Oh, okay. oh, what was the difficulty? Standard six. Well, I still only got one success after all that. It's okay. You get an indication from the way that he's wording things that um, he has every intention to um, break the uh, chains that are linked <laughs> between the Reaper and his captive, but he's just waiting. Oh. Ten, but he's waiting ten more minutes to take his action. Well, in that case, uh, I will whisper to him. I might be able to uh, assist by making the chain holder a bit befuddled, if you know what I mean. Would that help? I always appreciate any help when it comes to. Putting people in their place, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do. He, that that fella looks fresh out of the grave, and I know mm. I appreciate not having choice. So hmm. this seems to align with both of our interests nicely. Okay, Nicole, what you doing over mm -hmm. there? I am walking past each. I guess action and kind of just glancing okay. in if anyone catches my eye that's what i'm doing right at this point hello peter <laughs> <laughs> i know at this point she really does want to just go peter where are you <laughs> <laughs> my name is peter Pettigrew. can i help you <laughs> <laughs> i don't know guy sounds like a rat <laughs> Shh. wait a minute so, wait a minute you you know my uh uh Bar guest joke and then do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, ironically, Nicole, all of these characters, um, in, at least in this cabin that you've walked into, mm -hmm. uh, seem to be pretty social. They aren't like, you know, 
giving you any stink eye or anything of that nature or sort. Uh, this man here seems to be reading a paper and uh, just looks up at you every now and then when he notices that you are kind of like staring in his direction. Uh, this young lady seems to be reading some books to herself. But we'll look up at you and kind of smile as you walk by. And uh, the young lady up here wearing her death mask will kind of tilt her head in your direction to see if you're like trying to make a conversation with her or not. So all three of these characters seem very social. It just really comes down to you. Okay, well, you just said this one's a lady, this one's a lady, and I was told to look for a man. So I'm going in here. Okay, okay. He looks to you and he says, <clears throat> good evening. Good evening. At least, I think it's evening. <laughs> Good evening. Yes, um, yes. I'm Arwen. How are you? Oh, what's your name? Oh, my name is Alistair. Ah, dang it. That means it's this one. Okay. I'm sorry. Did I disappoint you? No, no, not at all. Not at all. It's nice to meet you, Alistair. Uh, it's nice to meet you, too. Would you care to sit with me? Maybe I can tell you about some of the local politics. And as he starts to ramble about, like, Stygian lifestyle, you get a sense that this guy is one of those, like, higher accolades of um, the hierarchy itself. They are definitely a legionnaire. Um, ah. And they're a naysayer to most um, of everything else outside of Stygia itself. Very highbrow. Okay. He looks to you and he says, so as I was saying, there is uh, oh, so much to tell, so much to tell. I mean, I would even say that things have improved ever since Charon went missing and made himself absent. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> oh, I definitely agree. Do you mind? Would you like a refreshment? Because I'm actually thirsty myself and I can get us both something to drink. Oh, yes, yes, and yes. And we can discuss this further. That would be great. Yes. Uh, anything expensive, please. Sounds good. And I will walk <laughs> my happy butt out of there and keep going. Follow me. Shouts <laughs> yeah. He shouts, nice to meet you, Arwen. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. I need to stop telling people my name. And I just keep going. <laughs> It'd okay. be funny if he just follows you from now on. Like, you keep seeing him from time to time. And he's like, where's my refreshment? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay you go on to the next compartment um the wraith there kind of like sees you return and again kind of averts his gaze um down to the window again as if to say like ah oh, crap she's back hi is this seat taken and he doesn't respond I hop in the seat anyway <laughs> Kind of inches further away from you as if to like put more distance between the two of you hi i i don't mean to uh you know crowd your space uh you are right now i apologize no, 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 I think, no. <sighs> just, right no, I just like meeting new people what's your name i'm not telling you my name why don't you make yourself scarce? Get lost. Can't you see I'm busy looking out this window and minding my own business? This is what's a very wrong? nice window. God, what's, what's wrong with kids these days? Jeez. Just you know, starts muttering just, to him. Yeah, I figured. Oh, man. I mean, well, it's got to be him, right? I'm just trying to figure out, like, okay, is there, is there anything about him that looks, I don't know. Peter-y. Yeah, Peter-y. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he does have a name tag that says, hi, my name is, but. Uh, nothing distinguishable. He just kind of seems to be hiding his features and uh, just like kind of moves his cloak so that to look at you. As if trying to ignore you as best as can, as he can. The more you insist on conversation, the more he's muttering to himself and says like more, like, God, you know what's what's wrong with the youth of today? 
Classic. Can a man can a man die in peace? You know, I've been thinking the same thing. You know, people nowadays are just really strange. But you know what is also very strange? Knowing one's name. My name's Arwen. What's your name? Oh, he stands up on the cushion. He's like, I'm not telling you my name. Now get lost. Go. Go. And he just starts yelling and making a scene. Okay, I'll just leave. Hey. Whoa. Ah, crap. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is everything okay here? I heard shouting. Oh, everything's fine. Ah, Oscar. I think I write these names now. Everything's fine. You remembered my um, name. I did. I did. I did. Um, I'm actually... You're Arwen. I am. You said you could join me again. Uh, yes. Do you know where I can get refreshments? I think it's over to the left. Maybe we should get some. Uh, you go grab something, and then I'm going to go check on the right to see if I can find somebody, and we just meet back in the seat, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Is this yeah, guy, let's do that. Is this guy, is this guy uh, giving you a hard time? Nope, not at all. You go get the refreshment. You go left. I go right, and we'll meet back, okay? Okay, let's go. I'm going to just go right you... through here, and I just leave. <laughs> <laughs> all right. As you make your way over to the uh, cabin and notice that it is a little bit more crowded than the other parts of the cabin. Um, it is, and I see someone who is kind of safe, so I'm jumping right back over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rob, you will notice uh, Nicole's character, Arwen, uh, sit next to you on the seat. Uh, she looks a little, like, frazzled, as if someone just yelled at her. Everything okay? Yeah, do you, it's really hard to talk to people. I don't, why is it so hard? Well, you know, some people just want to mind their own business, I guess. I guess. And uh, she'll just kind of sit there, kind of looking sad. <laughs> All right. So, when I start hearing shouting, not understanding anything about what's going on, I am going to, like, without moving too terribly much and waking up uh, Reaper face, I'm going to try to look through the, the, like, vestibule booth, whatever that we're in, for anything okay. that I could potentially use as a weapon if I was able to, you know, get out of my chains. Yeah. Give me a uh, perception investigation roll, please. So that's a smaller number. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Reach for the gun. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Can I can I use a willpower to uh, re-roll some of that? <laughs> you can. You can blow a willpower to re-roll one of those die if you want. I'll re-roll one of the ones. You can't. You can't re-roll uh, re the ones. Oh. You can only re-roll, yeah, non-successes. The four. Yeah, I had actually completely forgotten that you could re-roll die before. Otherwise, I would have done those on the last two rolls, but oh well. Ah. Um, yeah. I guess I'll still try for the four so that maybe it won't be a complete botch. Okay, go ahead. How'd you do? Yay. Nine. I, it was technically zero again, so... Okay. <laughs> Which is Oh my goodness, this hurts my brain. That is that is yeah. five botches or five ones that have exactly canceled out the number of successes. Yeah. Um unfor <sighs> unfortunately, you don't know why and it it's so sad because there seems to be something that could help you nearby. You just don't know where. Um there is nothing at this um little junction that you're sitting at that seems to be effective or a strong enough tool to uh, break your own chains. You're even looking at the Reaper himself and he doesn't seem to be wearing like, you know, a key or anything that could unfasten your binds. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll put this big weird rectangle box on the floor and stand on it to see if I can find <laughs> something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, Reaper, by the way, while you're kind of like looking around investigating, he looks at and he's just like, Cut it out. And he kind of like tugs at one of the chains, uh, causing you to actually kind of fall down um, onto your knees for a second. 
and then kind of like hoist yourself back up again. And he's just like, I told you, no funny business. I, I, yeah, no, no, I, I was, I thought I was being quiet. I will, I will resume my quietness. Um, you, you go You're on. You're as with noisy your as a mosquito in the ear. Oh my goodness. I hate mosquitoes. You know, I, I spent a really long time in Vietnam and uh, oh my goodness, the mosquito, uh, right, right. Shutting up. Silence. Shutting up. No, I, I'll definitely shut up. Yeah. And he kind of crosses his arms. And just just stares right at you. I, I will become performatively still. Okay. <clears throat> um, at this point in time, there will be a very loud explosion that comes from the outside. Um, most of the people in the train. car will kind of the uh, renegade will look outside her window um does anyone else want to look outside their window to see well, what's going on okay now, out of, out of, mm -hmm. um would i have any recollection of like where my did I just kind of like come to in the scene being loaded in? You have a brain. feeling that it did come through with you. You just don't know where it could be. Did you tonight. leave it behind when you were uh, taking Actually, the I will take one more look. They are not. He, he's role. distracted. You know, maybe maybe the gun or the explosion brought back memories of, you know, gunfire or something. <laughs> um, perception, investigation, difficulty seven. Perception. Investigation. Correct. Difficulty seven. Flipping heck yes, finally. <laughs> All right. That's so, three successes. <laughs> Alex, you don't know how you missed it all these times. Maybe you just weren't focused on it and you were so distracted by the Shadowlands and all of its activities. But uh, right underneath this Reaper's hand, um, being held by a handle, appears to be a long case that very, very easily could hold your uh, hunting rifle in it, your sniper Please, rifle. Please, I found you. He looks back at you and says, shh, quiet. Not now. Yeah, I'm shutting up. Oh. Um, it is at this point that um, you will notice, Jay, that um, tra uh, tracker, tracer, Tracker, tracer, tracker, tracker, tracker. Thank you. Uh, tracker will uh, run over to where Alex is, and uh, he will place both of his hands on the Stygian steel that is um, attached to himself and the Reaper. And he kind of like looks at you with wide eyes, like if you got something to do, do it now. But he doesn't say it out loud. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, use my pandemonium. Uh, level two skill of befuddlement and cast it on uh, shit. Uh, this guy, this guy, because that's the okay. Uh, not heretic. Gosh, dang it. Um, the reaper hierarchy. Reaper, yes. Okay. 
Let me check the book for that. You said uh, pandemonium. Pandemonium. And you're using uh, which power? Befuddlement. This is second level. Just making. Okay. This. Excuse me. All right. That'll be intelligence plus pandemonium. Difficulty will be a six. All right. 70 10. I can explode that 10 at least. Roll 1d10. Woo! Okay. One, two, three successes. All right. So you will spend one pathos. Um, describe to me how you were confusing me. Like, what, what is it that um, grabs my attention on and makes the Reaper confused? Uh, like, what does your power do to me? I'm trying to... Okay, so is it going to be easier for me to uh, convince him that something outside is way more important than what's inside? Or would it be easier to make him kind of forget the last however long he's had Alex, so the last two or three days worth of events, and think that he's on the way to get Alex, or um, Alex's character, and has not yet got that character yet? Um, you do get a sense that you are able to have him temporarily forget um, either who he is or with the amount of successes that you got, you can have him forget who he is and also what he is currently doing with um, Alex's character. So this will, la this will last for how many successes did you get? Three. Three successes. So this will last for about three rounds, which is the equivalent to about 15 seconds or so. Ah. All right. I'm just going to be like, uh, give, you have, I'm just going to say 10 seconds. Okay. He's confused for about 10 seconds. He totally doesn't know uh, who he is or why he has Alex's character. Okay. Why he has this guy. Okay. I will be using a power of outrage against uh, the Stygian Steel holding Alex. So, Alex, as you look down, you will see the um, individual who was sitting across from you a moment ago will place uh, his hands, which um, look very gnarly and uh, he looks like he has muscles upon his muscles when he tightens his grip on these chains. And uh, you'll see his hands start to glow a very eerie, almost lime green color as he just rips apart uh, the chains uh, between you and the Reaper themselves. And uh, they are now detached. Do you react in any kind of way? Sorry, was that me? Uh, that was for Alex. I was telling him what, what just happened. I was seeing if he wanted to react to it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just immediately try to grab the chains <clears throat> as they're falling to keep them from making a whole lot of noise. Because uh, like, okay. I saw what he did, yeah? Yes, you saw him yeah. break the chains between you and the Reaper. I'm, I'm going to motion over, like, not at the thing in mouth. Well, I guess not mouth because my face is covered. But I'm going to, like, gesture over at the case. Like, hey, we need to get that away from him. Unless I can see that the Reaper is confused. Uh, or, wait, you, Jade, you said that out loud, right? I said it very quietly that he was confused. He's got 10 seconds. Okay, then instead of grabbing the chains, I'm just going to like reach over and grab the case and say, thank you so much for holding on to this for me. I will be right back. And then immediately book it out into the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to okay. wander to the seat because uh, I, I think that's... Um, there's nothing more I can really do without giving away the fact that I was involved. Okay. And then I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking to the guy who just, you know, melted my chains for like, okay, mm -hmm. what's next? <laughs> he makes his way to the uh, right side of the car and uh, seems to open the door leading to the next car saying, we should get the fuck out of here. You coming? Hell yeah, that dude was a terrible conversationalist. 
<laughs> I don't think that's the only reason you should. Yes, be... no, we're still talking. Let's talk and move. Talk and move. <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, I'll just. Uh, I'll say I'll catch up with you on the other side. I will. Uh, I want to keep an eye out for what happens with this guy. All right. Actually, no. I'm. I sorry. I just changed my mind. I'm going to join you. Okay. Going out. There. Uh, he will open the door leading to the next car and um, will swiftly make his way into the next area. You guys will follow? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I wish so, I'd known this Gabriella's character. Otherwise, I would have tried to be a nice person and say, come on, hon, we're heading out. Just <laughs> Now. So, anyway. uh, this is for Rob and Nicole. As you look out the window of the Midnight Express, um, you will notice <laughs> that there is quite the storm brewing um, on the outside of California itself. Uh, the winds are starting to create a funnel, and um, you will notice that there is... Um, <laughs> Just an explosion of light as the sun is beginning to set across the horizon still. Um, but you feel this strong influx of wind hit the compartment and the windows of the Midnight Express itself. Uh, California, from your um, perception from where you're sitting in the Midnight Express itself, um, it, it seems to be disappearing, almost lowering down into the water itself. All the uh, flatlands and um, hills and meadows are now starting to submerge themselves into the water itself. Um, the Midnight Express continues its journey across the water that is now the ocean itself, oddly enough. But you can see that there is no longer a California. There is only um, devastation left in this wake. Um, you feel the uh, shroud begin to um, push and pull within the car that you're sitting inside. The uh, funnel itself will become stronger and more intense out in the ocean, um, this that once started off as a tempest that surrounded the Shadowlands has now erupted into a full-fledged maelstrom. And it is starting to shake the very lands around you. Um, from all you can tell, Rob, Carmel, the necropolis of Carmel, is completely gone and wasted. It is fallen underwater and is beginning to sink along with the skin lands. Well, that's frustrating. Yes. Kind of like, I'm a bit, I'm like, uh, that, that makes my character anxious and perturbed. Like, you know, kind of like, ah, ah, fuck. Cause he doesn't know what's gonna, what to do from this point on. Yeah. Nicole, uh, you will notice that Oliver, Rob's character, um, is starting to get, um, a little perturbed. Do you respond to this in any way? Yeah, I don't really like agitated people. I've dealt with that one time already, so I'm just going to like back up. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm not, not going to want to go okay. left. I'm not um, loudly agitated. I'm just, it's kind of like under my breath. I'm like, oh, fuck. I know, I just dealt with that one over here. I'm moving. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm not going left because I know I have the heretic and the hierarchy dude, so I'm just going to go this way okay and leave all right and you will depart from this car rob oliver will sit there in the seat watching this devastation take place out on the ocean floor uh as california sinks slowly into nothingness um you start to think and decide what you're going what your next few steps are going to be um at that time that everyone will hear the intercom go off um inside the midnight express saying 
Now hear this. Now hear this. The Necropolis of Carmel is currently disposed of. We will be going straight to Stygia to uh, make landing. Please stay in your seats. Remain calm. Everything is under control. And then the announcement will repeat itself one more time, admitting that the Necropolis Carmel has been disposed of. And the next stop is Stygia. Rob, do you decide to stay in the car, or do you want to... Oh, what's the other renegade doing? She's watching you, but she's also looking out the window with like kind of a perplexed look. As if she's she's even surprised by what's happening right now, but um, you know, once she's kind of taken in the scene of what's occurred and what's happening, she'll sit back in her seat um, and just kind of like look over at you to see what your next move is going to be. Stand up and kind of head to see what if she suddenly gives me a no if I start heading over. Like, I'm looking for at her body language. If I start to head over to sit down over there, because it looks like there's nobody else in here except this guy. <clears throat> does she kind of mm -hmm. go, mm -mm, don't do that. Like, I'm blowing her she'll cover kind of, or something. Yeah, she'll kind of um, rub her nose with her finger as if to indicate, you know, maybe keep your distance a little bit. Um, but she'll kind of eye the um, east side of the car to say, like, you know, if you want to rendezvous, with other renegades, you might want to head to that next car. Okay, I'm going to do that then. And uh, Rob, before you head over to that car, um, mm -hmm. this Reaper will stand up and walk over to you. He seems to be kind of like coiling up the Stygian chains that are left on the floor, and he looks to you and says, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, young lad. Uh, by chance, uh, did you see anyone suspicious come by here recently? No. Uh, interesting. Interesting. Mm. And he just kind of like walks off, trying to like figure, trying to piece things together and figure out what just happened to him. You'll notice, uh, by the way, Rob, that the chains are no longer uh, holding his captive. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. Follow her instructions and head out of this. Okay. Sounds good. Give me a moment. I'm going to move everyone to the next scene. And then there's an Archangelic in the next car. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just... Wait, it's someone just used Xenoph LifeWeb. <laughs> it's, just, it's just Xenophon. You guys are fine. Aha, I tricked you. I'm the second train now. <laughs> <laughs> I got a new job. Can I get you a refreshment? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just moving everyone's character over. All right. And then I need to have Oop, there we go. All right, I'm going to move everyone to the next car. Tracker will move forward as if motioning to uh, both Jay and Alex to follow him. I I can't move me. Yeah, I can't oh. either. I can't either. No, you can move now. <laughs> you don't have any chains on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I no, can um, feel but, chains are gone. But as I move to follow him, I'm also going to be pulling off my balaclava and uh, glasses, putting them in my pocket, take off my hoodie, tie it around my waist, and is yuppie a fashion as I can. 
uh, you know, basically trying okay. to completely change my look, you know? Yeah, that's fine. Alex, you should be able to move now. Yep. I'm working on the other characters. That's, now that everyone has new characters, it's like, huh, got to make sure I activate you guys next time. I can't move. Hey, Miles. I can't move. I, I know. Nicole, you've been activated. <laughs> Rob, I'm working on you next. All right, Rob, you've been activated as well. So, um, Tracker will look to Alex and Jay, and he'll say, this way, quickly. And he'll open the door to um, one of the compartments. Well, you know what they say, better, better the devil you don't know. Is that how that goes? You know what? One of them put me in chains. One of them unput me in chains. Eh. Okay. And he will head in. Sit himself down and he'll shut the door behind him. And he'll say, make yourself comfortable. Let's uh let's keep things on the down low for just a little bit, shall we? Immediately start jumping on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> he just smiles. I'm and just gonna kind of to... No, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Uh, he'll look over to um, Josie, Jay's character, and um, he'll throw you a pouch of coin, and you'll uh, Ooh, you'll def yeah, and you'll you'll definitely hear the sound of uh, Obli on the inside of the pouch. Jingle jingle! I'll just tuck mm -hmm. that into my uh, bodice without actually looking at how much is there. Yeah. He, game, he takes that game, as a yeah. This game is determined to keep me from knowing how much I'm worth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm determined. Anyway, sorry. Mal Miles Tracker Tracker looks to the two of you and uh, he says, Job well done. Job well done. You know, you'd make yourself a really good renegade if you uh, decided to work with us more often. Are you sure you want to go to Sigia and do their handiwork? Uh, unfortunately, I must, but I will keep your offer in mind. I certainly mm. have no options about working for you. I can definitely do that as when the, <laughs> when my schedule allows for it. If it's all the same to you, uh, I'd like you. I'd like to introduce you to, uh, well, my contractor. The person who hired me mm. to be on this train. Would you uh, be interested in meeting with him? More contacts, the merrier. Couldn't agree with you more. And uh, he seems to be uh, making his way over to the small trolley and uh, starts to pour what appears to be a beverage of like a hot tea. Although it smells uh, herbalicious, it does have like a very strong scent of some kind of chemical. <laughs> Rob and Nicole, the last thing you see as you enter this new cabin area is this door shutting and um, a bunch of new wraiths standing inside of this cab. Everyone seems to be standing by the windows and looking at the carnage that is occurring outside right now. So they're all very distracted. What do the two of you want to do? told to head into this car if I want to rendezvous up. So I think maybe I'm going to take a spot by an empty window and kind of see who comes through here. Okay. Sounds good. Nicole, how about you? Um, you know what? Is she desperate enough or is she not desperate enough? Peter! <laughs> I'm trying to do it in a slightly more subtle way. So Peter. I, now, as I am moving down here, I am going to just be saying, not loudly, but just to myself, a poem. 
the <clears throat> Little Peter Rabbit poem. And hopefully somebody turns around when I keep saying the name Peter. Heretic shows up. I love that poem. That's a great poem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nicole. I like you it. You'll hear um, this door unlock, unhinge, and a young man oh my comes God. out. And he looks to you directly and says, I love that song. Uh, I mean, wow. He is interesting. Ah, oh, he's Peter. <laughs> he looks to you oh, and he wow. says, my name just happens to be Peter. I love poems like that. Hi, does, Peter. And she looks really happy to see you. How does that poem go again? Um, Peter, Peter, Cottontail. Ah, huh. I don't know the rest of it. I just know the very beginning. <laughs> ah, no worries. No worries. You definitely have my attention. How can I help? What's your name? My name is Arwen, and I was wondering if we can kind of talk in private as I whisper. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what do you want to talk about, Arwen? Not in private. Oh, in private, in private, of course. Uh, why don't you follow me? I have um, somewhere uh, that we can speak. I uh, am due for a meeting, actually. And he just kind of walks around you um, and makes his way. I will follow. Okay. The, the moment he puts his hand on the uh, doorknob, he kind of stops and looks over to the left and kind of like gazes over at uh, Rob's character, Oliver, and kind of whispers at him too and says, hey, hey you, yeah, you. Let move over so he doesn't have to whisper at me loudly across the hallway. Yes? I think you should come with us. I got some information to share with you. Okay. <laughs> good answer, good answer. Um, he'll unlock the door and make his way inside the compartment, um, opening it and allowing you guys inside as well. Uh, Tracker will pour tea and uh, we'll notice the two of you enter in as well. He'll smile. And pour some more cups of tea. And uh, yeah, he will kind of hand out the tea to each of you. So everyone has a cup of tea and a saucer to go along with it. And uh, Peter will look to the group. And uh, it looks like he pulls out a notebook from behind him. Um, seems to be tucked up um, in his tight pants and just kind of like un hinges it from the back where his uh, buckles are and uh, just opens it up to various pages and uh, very, very keenly and awkwardly kind of goes up to each of you studying your faces and your features. And once he's had a moment to kind of study all four of you, kind of goes back over to where Tracker is um, standing and uh, he will put his notebook to his side and uh, pull out what appears to be like a writing pen. And uh, he just kind of looks to everyone and says, welcome everybody to this wonderful excursion. My name is Peter McGregor. I bet you all have many, many questions right now. Okay, since you don't have any questions, uh, I guess I'll just continue on with uh, my own dilemma that is going on right now. <laughs> and uh, he just kind of pulls out his notebook and starts reading through it. Um, so let's see if I have this correct. And he looks up over to uh, Alex's character. Bronson, is it? Um, just kind of almost out of instinct, I'll just kind of stand a little bit more upright and yes, sir, that, that would be me. Uh, yeah, yep. Uh, Bronson. Yep. 
Good, 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 good. I, I anticipated this much. <laughs> oh, man, you do seem to fit the part. And he looks over at your uh, case that you're holding. He's like, oh, good. Thank goodness you have that. Uh, <laughs> they said that you would be carrying that with you. And um, it, it would be a shame if you didn't have that with you. Yeah, never I leave dare home say I, I wouldn't have recognized you without it. <laughs> would have been a real pity if you didn't spot that in time. Man, man, man. Good to see you. Uh, so fortunate. I'm very observant, though, so I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> he snaps two fingers at you. Good to see you outside the call. Welcome to the Shadowlands. Don't make yourself comfortable, though. Yeah, no, I think I would uh, definitely self-describe as incredibly uncomfortable. Ah. <clears throat> uh, Peter will then focus his attention over to Josie, Jay's character. Let's see here. Uh... Josie, uh, last name is a little bit garbled. Josie Smith. Ah, very good, very good. I'm still just nonchalantly jumping on the bed. Well, maintaining okay. a very serene and respectable face and pretending to be completely composed while still okay. jumping on the bed. Anyway. He um, tightens his two hands together over by his chin very, very excitedly and looks to you almost like matching your energy beat for beat and says, animal tamer. Do I have that right? Hmm. I like to prefriend, bleh, pretend that I am friend to animals, but that does seem to suit my employers better calling myself an anima animal tamer. Tamer. Yes. You kind of, his energy kind of drops just like a couple decibels and he looks in his notebook very, very like studiously. And he says, it says here, animal tamer. I'll just wave my, uh, wand, my wand, my, uh, rod around and say, I, I can be a little mean to my animals sometimes. So perhaps animal tamer is the appropriate term. Uh, uh. And he takes this pen that he has is in his hand and um, as if he's trying to make a motion to lick the pen to like, you know, make the ink uh, more potent. Although he is wearing a death mask, he just kind of like stabs his mask a few times with his pen and just starts feverishly writing in the notebook as if trying to make some edits or changes in it. And uh, when he's done, he closes his notebook again, places it to his side and uh, nods a couple times and looks over. Oliver Berg! Oliver Berg? Oliver Berg. Ha ha Mysterious past uh, construction? Do I have that right? Yeah, I've done work in construction. Hmm. Hmm. If I am not mistaken, and he kind of like uh, leans forward and kind of like perks his hand next to his mouth as if to like whisper something to you, but it's very evident that he's, you know, just saying it out loud. It says here that you have a very mysterious future, possibly tied into the grand scheme of things. I, I can't confirm that. It's My future's mysterious to me, that's for sure. Would you happen to have some dabblings in... Fatalism, my friend. <laughs> you are familiar with fatalism, correct? Am I familiar with fatalism? No. No. Maybe in a previous life, Rob. <laughs> man, man, <laughs> I'll say that. Maybe in a previous life. I don't know anything about it. Ah, ah, ah. And he, again, like pokes his, ma his death mask with his pen again and starts scribbling feverishly into his notebook. <laughs> anyway, uh, good to meet you. Good to meet you. And then looks over down um, to the right. Uh, when, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to say this incorrectly. Um, is it Wen Lin? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. He actually says Wen Lin to you. And you're kind of like surprised, he, like, he looks, why yeah, did he, he just really call confused. me Wen Lin? And he's like, Wen Lin. It says here, here Wen Lin. Am I, uh, I, am, I am I pronouncing that incorrectly? Is it, uh, is it Wen Lin? No, no, no. I mean, 
he got it right, but um, yeah, I don't that, but you, you can just call me Arwen. <sighs> okay. Arwen, Arwen, Arwen. And again, takes his pen and starts, you know, scribbling hard, almost like crossing out your name and putting on a different name. It's like, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay, okay. How did you get, how do you know all of us? And where did you get this information? Well, I'm so glad you asked that because this is why I need to have this meeting with all of us. Um, looks over to <coughs> Tracker who um, the two of them exchange nods and Tracker will actually make his way over to um, the wall and uh, place both of his hands up against the um, surface of the wall. And um, he seems to be humming some type of um, Arcanos and vibrations from his throat into his hands and into the walls themselves as if causing some kind of power to flux its way into the walls. Um, you get a sense that um, everything has become solitary and dampened into this room to help mask your voices from anyone hearing in on your conversation. And he looks to the group again and says, oh, very good, very good. All right, now where to start? Where to start? Well, um, do we want the good news or the bad news? And he looks to the group. Good news or bad news, guys? Mm, let's start off with the bad news so we get that out of the way. Okay. Uh, I need the four of you to kill someone for me. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, uh, who, when, why, where? Yeah. Arwen raises her hand and says, why are we killing someone? Who are we killing? And why do we have to do it? Well, the good news is, the good news is, uh, uh, when Lynn, uh, sorry, 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 checks this notebook again. Arwen, sorry. <laughs> Arwen, the good news, Arwen, is that the person you are killing is in the Skinlands and is not a wraith. So it is someone who is already living. <laughs> so we don't need to worry about the uh, whole, well, how do we destroy another wraith thing? <laughs> it's, it's someone who's already uh, in the Skinlands and dwelling over there. So, uh, yeah. Does that I make things easier? The, no. The how, how was easy enough, but the why I would like to know more, just so I don't have mm -hmm. my conscience. Okay. Well, that's where the uh, that's where the good news comes in, and uh, he <laughs> kind of like you know tiptoes over to your circle, and uh, kind of whispers to everyone. Charon has been found. We found him in the Skinlands. Hmm. Uh, out of character, do you know who or what Charon is? You get a sense from uh, the only character who does not know who Charon is is probably. Um, Alex's character up here to the north. Um, Alex, you've probably heard the name Charon from like old mythology and yeah, yeah, lore no, and I mean, le legends. Yeah, no, my my initiate like my immediate response is like like the god <laughs> from like two thousand years ago in Greece. Right. Uh, well, more like the original ferryman, the, the man who very much so <laughs> created the uh, Shadowlands themselves and uh, everything yes, that you yes, see too, around us. on the eyes and stuff. It, 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 it's not a real person. You know that, right? Uh, well, if that's the way that you want to believe it, then um, I think you should be the one who does the assassination. <laughs> yeah, what? definitely. This will make things easier for you. Suddenly, Wait, so I'm less want... certain about many things. Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. Ha, good joke. Good joke. Good joke. Good joke. I like. Yeah, that. I, I, I meant like that. that. I'm I'm clever that way. <clears throat> yes, you are so clever. I would like to get all of my jokes from you. That's Peter awesome. will then. Peter will then kind of like go through his notebook and like push a few pages aside. Um, look to the circle again and say, "All right." So let's get down to the nitty gritty, shall we? Uh, <sighs> I never really answered why we're 
killing Kiron? Or is this something I would know uh, out of character? Is this something I should know why we are killing him? No, no, no this is this should be brand news to you. This is very uh very quiet hush hush information. <laughs> That's why I'm telling it to you guys. But we'll get to the details of why I'm telling you guys in particular very very soon. Allow me to elaborate. And um, he kind of takes another sip of tea through his death mask, which is kind of awkward. So long ago, the oracles, the ones who use fatalism, told Charon that he was doomed to perish in battle against a Malfian by the name of Gorul. He made plans with, uh, and he kind of like gestures over to Nicole's character, Arwen. He made some plans with her type, the Nemoy, to protect his memories so that when he fell to the Malfian, his empty soul could escape from the underworld. And one day he would then return at Stygia's moment of greatest need. And uh, you'll see Peter go over to the window of the car and kind of like tap against the window and say, I would say that this is pretty much so a uh, moment of need, wouldn't you say? Okay, so we're basically killing him in the, hum in the skin lands to bring his soul out here. Right, right. Okay, that makes sense. So Charon's plan worked. The uh, Nemoy received Charon's memories and scattered them across the underworld in the guise of the Empire's worst enemies. From time to time, Charon would disappear from watchful gazes, going off to refresh the Nemoy's records of himself. When he fought Garul, the Malfian, he was ready to pass from the underworld, and he did. Heron was reborn as a brand new citizen of Washington State and grew up to be an investment banker. He's in his mid-50s. He is currently in failing health. And since he's a heavy smoker, uh, oh man, he's got some bad luck getting decent service from the National Health Services. So he would not have many years to live in any strict event, if that makes you feel a little bit better about uh, murdering him. <laughs> but anyway, the crisis at hand. Yeah. It requires Charon to be reunited now without delay. So it will be necessary for us to reap him. Prophecy, and he holds his notebook up in the air, Prophecy says that very specific rates will address the fate and fate's instruments for this task. So, and he points his notebook at all four of you. This is where you guys come in. Each and every one of you has been destined by Lady Fate herself to carry out this task. Your friend over here, Arwen, <laughs> she is what you would call a Nemoy. Now, hands up anyone. Does anyone know what a Nemoy is? Something that should be kept a secret. Oh, we're in good privacy right now. Uh, aren't, aren't those one of those um, uh, Star Trek aliens? <clears throat> no, no, uh, 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 yep, shutting up. Peter tilts his head and he's like, I don't know the reference, but that's still fun. Keep on the good jokes there. Arwen just stays quiet. What it is. Oh, come on. Arwen, why don't you explain it to them? Otherwise, I'll have to. Just, I have the ability to just, like, you know, manipulate memories, take memories, hold on to memories. That sort of thing. Interesting. And other stuff, if necessary. But basically, that's it. 
See, seeing and, as seeing as this is the first time I've heard of like suddenly there are powers that people have, my jaw is like just hanging open. Like you can do what? <laughs> Welcome to the new world. It's arguably worse than the last world, and that's actually saying something. Look, I basically Don't woke wor- up in chains. I'm not under illusions. This is not heaven. <clears throat> Don't worry, Bronson. All you have to do is aim your gun and fire at people. You don't have to worry about any powers. Speaking of which, out of character, I do realize I still need to get the Arkan away. I also noticed I completely didn't spend any of my bonus points. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I, I need so- to get on that. No worries. Peter will look to the group and say, So, it has been passed down to me through many, many a prophecy that your group here, sitting in this room right now, minus my colleague over there, are destined to help harbor our good friend Arwen over here into Washington to kill and reap the soul of Charon. And once you have collected his body from the Skinlands and into the Shadowlands, it will be up to Arwen to help awaken his memories as Charon. For you see, we are in some devastating times. <laughs> I'm sure you noticed outside that uh, we just lost the entire state of California. And he kind of like looks over to Oliver Berg and uh, kind of like wonders why Oliver is not kind of happy or interested. Uh, looks through his notebook really quickly and goes, oh, 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 Bronson, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't read the tragic backstory part of your uh, of your chapter here. I'm sorry. Hmm. No, 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 no need to get into that. It's all totally fine. Don't, 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 don't. Sorry, I didn't mean to say Bronson. Um, I meant to say uh, Oliver. 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 Yeah, okay, I was actually I really confused, yeah. but okay. Yeah, no, you should be. So uh, Rob's character, Oliver, um, he will say like, you know, oh, you know, he's like wondering why Oliver is not as like jovial or interested or energized as much. Uh, looks through his notebook um, and says, oh, oh, Oliver, Oliver, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't check the uh, um, the backstory part of your chapter. I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry. Did, did you want to share with everyone else what just happened? Maybe I'll just ask, like, uh, yeah, uh, Peter. Um, I'm trying to think of how to phrase it. So California's just gone. There's no coming yes, back. Yes, sir. No coming back from that. California is deep. Down in the ocean. And anyone who was there is gone. That is correct. Is there a chance anyone got out? Absolutely not. There was a... A rift. A momentary rift. Where an entity... Known as a... Archangelic. There we go. That's the word. Um, An Archangelic um, decided to create a rift uh, between our world and the Skinlands. And because of this uh, rift that he made, unfortunately, everything sank down below, all the way down into oblivion, including all the rates, everything character how good was the information i got that my family was there is there a chance they were somewhere else it was the best lead that you had most likely they could either be um over in uh california or they could have been rerouted to stygia there's a chance they could still be in stygia uh-huh well most that- likely carmel was the location you know of interest so what happens to everyone who was there 
Well, they're probably feeding Oblivion right now. Does everybody in the room know what Oblivion is? Anybody? Anyone want to share? I, I, I could benefit from some knowledge on that particular point. <clears throat> Anyone want to explain Oblivion to uh, our newbie over here? Arwen just stays quiet. She is not blinking. She's just staring at everybody. Okay, rough room. Got it. And Bronson, that is exactly what oblivion is. Emptiness. Nothingness. Complete and utter void. So imagine being in this quiet, silent room for all eternity. Not a very pleasant feeling, is it? I would not describe it as especially pleasant. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where we are trying to avoid. And this is the reason why we need to have Charon back in the Shadowlands, is to help us defend from something greater that is happening. Now, I have read through uh, my prophecies and uh, dove a little bit further into the future to see what is to come. And uh, I must let you know that um, something far more dangerous and scary as a... <sighs> And um, Tracker will look at him and say, Archangel. Archangel, that's the word. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> an Archangel, um, something more powerful than an Archangel is uh, making their way here. So from the, what, from the pits of oblivion. <laughs> so what I'm gathering is we need to kill an ancient god so that he comes to life and saves us from rooms full of awkward silence. I have got to stop drinking. Yeah. <laughs> About he checks, yeah. Peter checks the tea and he's like, huh, I thought the tea was fine. There shouldn't be anything wrong with the tea. I don't know what's wrong with the tea. Anyway, any questions? Yeah, so yes, many, many questions. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Arwen. You, you should have many questions, I imagine. Go ahead. Please. No, I think Rob had something, and I think I cut him off. So if Rob, you want to go oh. first, go ahead. Yes. Mr. Oh. Oliver. Caused this. What caused what? Who, who caused this to happen? Are you talking about California, or are you talking about um, the uh, maelstrom that is happening outside I right guess, now? I guess California, is the, are they not the same thing? Like so, who who caused California to fall? Who brought about all these these events? So, um, according to my writings, there was a group of individuals who decided to worship an entity that we call a plasmic. A plasmic is a um, well, a figment of everyone's imagination that is given birth and given power through belief. And uh, let's just say that a large group of people, and he kind of like tilts forward and pretends to whisper again, cultists, basically. Um, a bunch of cultists decided to worship and strengthen and armor this uh, um, entity that they believe to be a uh, archangel. And uh, yeah, when the time was right, um, this group of cultists decided to... Um, Organize and orchestrate a cataclysmic event causing oblivion to devour and swallow a large deal of souls from all across the country. And when its appetite had been satiated and full, um, oblivion decided to spit out what we call the sixth and final maelstrom. A storm that will end all storms. So did, did he give me enough info the information he gave me? Do I realize he's talking about heretics? Yes, he is okay. definitely talking about heretics. Yep. Going to add a new enemy to my list. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Of course. 
What'll it be, Arlo? Question. You talk about that there's a prophecy saying that the four of us are the ones who are specifically supposed to do this. But why is it the four of us? Specifically, why do you I bring about his memories when I don't have them? My ability means that I, I'm storing it and then I can give it back. But if I don't have it, how am I helpful? I think you have the wrong people. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, if you are entrusted and empowered with the Arcanos known as uh, Nemesis, you have already been given Charon's gift and his memories. It is a latent and hidden power within you that is not easily accessed. It is something that needs to be unlocked and explored. And through the correct um, mentorship and also teachings of other uh, Nemoi that are out there, you will soon be able to harness the memories of Charon himself. Um, it is not a simple feat, but that's the reason why any gestures towards the other three that are in the room. That's why we have uh, some helping hands to make sure that, uh, well, your pilgrimage is successful. You wouldn't want to do this on your own now, would you? I don't want to do this at all. Uh, well, I mean, and he looks over down in this notebook and you can kind of see his uh, rabbit ears kind of droop down a little bit sheepishly. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, I wanted to explore, but this sounds crazy. Right? And she just kind of like looks at the rest yeah. of the soon to be circle. I'm just gonna shrug while I keep on bouncing on the bed. I am currently looking as much like Gomer Pyle as humanly possible. <clears throat> I'm, I'm kind of so. looking down, lost in thought. Obviously, you, you need some time. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, well, technically, I don't trust you. Um, Lady Fate trusts you. I trust Lady Fate, and if she says that you guys are the bunch to do this, then, um, uh, Hell, I, I can see it. So I do have one question. Of course. What was the deal with Skippy McGee and why was he trying to sell me someplace? I mean, I get that I totally got bought by you, but at least you had the courtesy not to put me in chains. But he said I should have gone east, but then he took me west, and... Oh, this is... Oh, yeah, this is part of your backstory. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And he goes through his notebook and rummages to your chapter and reads it. Uh, yes. So that is known as a reaper. Reapers are... Um, they're kind of freelance workers. Um, most of them work for the hierarchy, but some of them just do it for the money itself. Um, yeah, he was... According to this, uh, it seems like he was in it for the love of the game. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but by chance, um, it says here that uh, Josie was able to team up with uh, my colleague here, uh, Tracker, and was able to free you from your binds and uh, lead you on the right path. Uh, as far as the East and West thing, um, well, I can tell you that East from here is another citadel where they collect uh, the souls of those who have died from disease. So that's where you would have been registered and uh, your reaper would have been paid the full amount. Stygia is kind of like the shortcut of like, well, if I get you to Stygia, they'll at least place you somewhere. So out of character, uh, is there like a stigma around having died of disease or? No, not really. Everyone okay. dies for something from something. Okay, I mean, that, that was my thought, but I, I just wanted to check. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he kind of like looks at you and he says, you know, um, you'd be surprised. There are citadels all over the place. In fact, there was a citadel right down to the west um, called Carmel, California, where, uh, and kind of like looks over to uh, Oliver again and goes, well, there was a citadel there. That necropolis is uh, deep underwater now and its souls are lost to oblivion. So our goal is to prevent that from happening even further. Um, my colleague here, and he gestures over to Tracker, 
is in alignment with, uh, well, let's just call them renegades. And their goal is to uh, break the bonds and the, uh, and he kind of like looks through his notebook to make sure he's wording it correctly, uh, break the chains that uh, connect all raids to the hierarchy and set them free. So um, you guys should know that we are heading to Stygia right now. Um, that is basically, and he looks over to uh, Bronson in particular, that is the place uh, where the Empire has laid claim to everything. Um, you're, you're familiar with Stygia, right? Stygia, the word Stygia? Uh, yeah, something to do with the underworld and the river, the river Leith and a great deal of something about nothing. This is all a really old story. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of truth in those tales, believe it or not. Okay. I'm sure your uh, yeah. I'm sure your colleagues here, your contemporaries, will be more than happy to fill in the gaps as you go along. But um, like I said, your job is just to, and he kind of like pretends to have like a a gun in his hands, even though there's nothing there. Your job is just to do the shooty shooty. At least that's what the book says you're good at is the shooty shooty part. But anyway, um, like I said, you guys need to uh, uh, what's the word again? Tracker and tracker's like decompress. And he's like, yes, decompress. You guys probably need to decompress. I've given you a lot of information. You probably need to think this through. Uh, don't think too long about it, though. We're going to be landing in Stygia very soon at the what's called the uh, way station. And at the way station, um, I can direct you to um, some contacts that work with Lady Fate herself. Um, you see Lady Fate has her own island that is connected to Stygia. And uh, I would recommend that you guys go to that island as opposed to the Empire of Stygia itself. So uh, but, I do have yeah. one more question. Obviously, Certainly. this is all a fever dream of some sort. But if I were to humor you, um, it seems like you're implying that there is a separation between where we are and the skin lands. Uh, look, I, I trust myself as a marksman. I'll just kind of pat the, the case. But how am I going to shoot through that divide? I guess you'll have to learn your talents as you go along, won't you? There are more ways to uh, skin a cat, Bronson. And there are more ways to kill a living being on the other side, even though we are the deceased, as you see before you. Some of your colleagues here might even be able to help you. Uh huh. If a plasmic is able to uh, rupture the sides of the shroud and cause an entire state to sink down below the ocean. I think that a handful of wraiths such as yourselves can kill one man. No, I, I, I have killed scores of men, hundreds, maybe thousands, but a very oh, large whoa. number to be sure. Wow, yes. Big numbers. Big numbers, so impressive. And, and just out of character, I am lying through my teeth on that so <laughs> and he's, he's just going along with it as if you know trying to match your energy almost you know I, I i was just providing that context for the rest of the group and uh peter will look over to um josie jay's character and uh mm -hmm. kind of point his pen at you and say miss lion tamer what do you think Hmm, about what exactly? Oh, this whole this whole deal. Ah, well, I do have a job that I'm supposed to do in Stygia, but uh, I, I don't see that I couldn't attempt this job either at the same time as or perhaps after the other job that I've been requested to do. Unless, of course, you are a mastermind that, hmm set up that job for me uh, as a 
way to get me on the train for some strange reason. If you are destined for Stygia, most likely Lady Fate wants to speak to you. I am destined for, for Stygia, so I suppose I will speak to Lady Fate when and if I see her. Mm. You'll most likely speak through her vessels, for you see Lady Fate um, <clears throat> does not make herself apparent very easily in front of folks such as us. I'm not particularly surprised. Hmm. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, Mr. Oliver, you mentioned uh, enemies. I hope that we can be friends. Or said that out loud. Uh, adding a new enemy. That was as I was taking notes. I didn't mean to say that out loud. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Uh, but I do, out of character, have a question. Is I, I As a renegade, I've, it's, isn't, isn't it not pretty common knowledge that Car Charon is the enemy of the renegade, being a member of the hierarchy? He was the one who formed the hierarchy. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's opposed to the renegades? Correct. Okay, well then... Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm... I'm... I mean... We got we gotta stop this from happening again. Um I'm with you on that. Hmm. And uh yeah, if if it looks like other reasonable people are in, on board with this, so I think uh I'm I am too. Fantastic. Lastly, Peter will look to Arwen. Well, it looks like everyone else is on board. How about yourself, Miss Arwen? Ah, I mean, my mentor said that you were supposed to lead me to the next step. He didn't really mention this. Um, this conversation yeah. is obviously being kept um, in strong privacy between us all, naturally. Naturally, mm. I I guess I'll go along with it. I I get to see more of the world like I wanted to. Hmm. It says here in the book that it would take you guys a little time to process all this information, but I guess uh, huh, I guess everyone is more straightforward than I thought they would be. Anyway, make yourselves comfortable. Um, if you need any more future refreshments, let me know. Um, we can organize that here for this private cabin. But uh, I need to have a private conversation with my colleague here. Uh, we'll keep the uh, dampening of the room going so that you can speak in private. But um, yeah. Uh, as soon as we... Yes. I, I, I was just going to double check. Um, I seem to recall that uh, uh, Miss uh, Josie there um mentioned i had 10 to 15 seconds are we sure that um tim the the reaper dude isn't gonna come in here looking he was looking the wrong uh, yeah. way last i saw him tracker will look to you and say we'll take care of things oh good then i'll, I'll start putting on my normal clothing like the balaclava the eyeglasses the hoodie that sort and I'll plop myself down on the couch and put my boots up on the end table. Yeah. Peter will look to everybody and say, take some time, make some preparations, discuss your strategies. As soon as we hit Stygia, I recommend um, heading from the way station uh, straight to, um, and I'm going to mispronounce this. So I won't even attempt. Actually, you know what? I'm not. I am going to attempt. <laughs> and sorry. Uh, what was the NPC's name? Not Peter, but the other one. Tracker. Tracker. Yes. Okay, I wasn't sure whether it was Tracer or Tracker. So. All right. So you will go to the Isle of Euripides. The Isle of Euripides. That's right. That is, that is where you will meet with um, Lady, Fet's, Lady Fate's vessels. And they will speak to you about what is to be done in Washington. 
I will also be there, ironically. But I have a feeling that we should part ways at this point in time. Otherwise, we're going to look <laughs> rather suspicious, aren't we? Till next time. And he looks over to Arwen and says, Don't worry. You got this. Everyone has to go on a quest every now and then. Some people just have to go to the supermarket and pick up some groceries. You just happen to hold all the memories of an ancient deity. No big deal. And he leaves. Shuts the door. Shuts the door. Escapes through he the is literally about to burst into tears. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? After what Peter just said, she looks like she's about to burst into tears at this point. Uh, I mean, <laughs> is it like a visible thing, or are you trying to hold it back? She's holding it back. I mean, her <laughs> she's not blinking, but you can see her eyes watering. I will just be like, well, it doesn't sound like any of you have any particular plans, but I've got a job that needs done to uh, uh, handle some beasties out in Stygia. Uh, I'll actually make my way over to the nearly crying woman and be like, <laughs> you know, that, that awkward, like, pat, 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 pat on the shoulder of, I don't know what to do in this situation, but you look in distress. Head over. Well, you're you're all welcome to join me, and uh, I'll just be like, "You okay over there, dear? You you don't look so happy." I mean, if you're going somewhere, aren't we all supposed to go together? Isn't that what Peter said? We're like a team, right? I mean, yep. the man I was mean... dressed as a bunny. <laughs> Well, apparently, going over there, or meeting up in Stygia, I'm supposed to talk to quote-unquote Lady Fate, so perhaps that will give us more clarity on the details of this fate, fated quest we're supposed to go on. It, Anybody? It, it... I was what, just going to say... <laughs> Sorry, um, I was just going to say... Uh... So, uh, Ar Arwen, is is there anything you you want to talk about, or do you just need to have a good old cry? Because I'm not sure what to do here. Just need a moment. I just stay in my corner. I look incredibly relieved and go lay out my gun case and start checking over my gun. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'll, I'll lay it out on the, the bed, open the case, double check all the parts are in working order, give it a nice clean. Uh, and while I'm doing so, I'll just kind of look up to the group and be like, so we're dead. Yeah. Like, dead, dead. Yep. I mean, I mean, you went to the other side. I don't think everyone does but yes essentially you're a dead person a ghost as it were and mm -hmm. we're gonna go back to the world of the living to kill the spirit of an ancient god so that he can keep us continuing to not live well we're killing his mortal body which will allow his spirit to join us right we're killing him so that he can be brought back to unlife so the unworld doesn't end. Yes. Yes. Makes perfect sense. And I will just go right back to cleaning my gun. It is clear that I have no idea what is going on. Okay. Out of character, I do, but like in character, <laughs> you know. The uh, intercom. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, are we to assume we're not the only ones who know? Like, we're probably going to be fighting other people along the way. I mean, there's plenty of different groups with 
different vested interests in this. So yeah, I would I would expect some form of opposition. We're certainly going to want to be careful. Yeah. So speaking of which, um, Timothy Shala Reaper, whatever his name is, seemed really adamant that I do something called getting registered. Yeah, that's with the hierarchy. You don't want to do that. They're the. Well, uh, sorry, go ahead. I mean, I was just going to say, he was kind of a dick. I didn't want to do anything he wanted to do. But, you know, relationships are two-sided, so. Well, the hierarchy is, they're the big power on this side of the world. Uh, It's kind of the group Charon started way back in the day, as so the legends say. But uh, they're, uh, as their name implies, they're a very hierarchical organization who basically want to pound you into fitting a fitting cog in their machine. And uh, I personally don't much care for them and wouldn't recommend you jump at the opportunity to register yourself with them. I mean, am am I going to have to deal with more somewhat unaccommodating individuals like him in the future or... Yeah, pretty much. You're just going to have to kind of watch your back. You don't want to be around Reapers because they're going to want to take you in. I I deal with that, too. I'll actually kind of sidle up to the bed next to Jay's character and just be like, so, question among apparent friends. Mm -hmm. How much gold did he give you? Look, 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 the Reaper wouldn't tell me. I just heard some jingling. I want to know how much I'm worth. Okay. It it it's 34. not an ego thing. It's not an <laughs> ego thing. I am super confident. But also I'm kind of curious. Well, for one, zero gold. And here we use Obolai. For two, I'll count. I, I will just do an absolute slow blink because my character sees it as like we use large monolithic structures that are just a giant pillar upward. <laughs> <laughs> well, we applied a shrink ray to them, but yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll but also I will count my obelai later. Mostly I did it for the love of these shit was it um these hierarchy bastards I don't like it that they snatch newly dead people and immediately force them to become one of them so I honestly was less concerned about how much uh they were paying me so I will find out later in the privacy of my own this, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 am, I am certainly grateful. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, without mm. you, I would still not have any kind of conversational partner because that dude was a twat. You don't say. Well, if we're going to work together, we might want to get to know each other and our capabilities. At this time, the intercom in the Midnight Express will go off again, and you will hear the voice come back on and say, now hear this, now hear this. Next next stop approaching, Way Station, Stygia, Empire. All passengers departing, please make your way to the exits. And as you look out the window, You will see the train approaching a very, very stern, gloomy, and powerful-looking city made up of many different towers and skyscrapers and all kinds of pieces of architecture from all across the world just kind of smashed together and smushed in this underworld of sorts. But what 
drives you even more curiously is the cave walls that seem to be on the outskirts of this giant empire that the train approaches. And as you take a glimpse closer at those walls, those caverns, those stone, you start to notice faces and skulls and arms as if these are li these are almost um, repurposed bodies of souls calcified and made into a storm wall to protect the city of the dead from the possibility of a great maelstrom pounding at the gates.